What if an ancient fungus attached itself to the International Space Station and started raining spores down from the sky? What if the mainstream news tried to cover this up? All right, so I'm going to be taking you through an article from the Sorsha Fall, Sisters of Sorsha Fall. And I don't necessarily recommend this website. In fact, in some ways, it's quite sketchy. But having said that, they do report on things that no one else is reporting and connect dots that nobody else connects that often turn out to be true. So while I don't condone this website, um, there is a lot of fear-based, seemingly propaganda. Um, They do report things that are relevant, and so I'm going to take you through this article. And I'll leave uh, links in the description to all the source material and so you can investigate for yourself and use your own discernment. All right, so a seemingly ordinary at first glance Security Council report circulating the Kremlin today became anything but mundane when its discussion minutes show that the highest national security classification level of special importance has now been placed on a Ministry of Health scientific study dealing with a new species of fungus called Candida auris, a mysterious fungal disease first detected in Japan in 2009 shortly after the International Space Station astronaut Kochi Wakata visited his home nation and is now sweeping across the globe, has been labeled an urgent threat to humanity and so invasive and unbeatable. Confirmed cases and death have now been recorded in several European countries as well as in the United States, India, Pakistan, Venezuela, South America. This is a article sourced uh, from Sputnik, so you can check that out. I'll leave links in the description. Um, uh, Dr. Tom Chiller, the head of the U.S. Center for Control and Meiotic Disease Branch, that means mushroom or fungal, has just terrifyingly likened to a creature from the Black Lagoon. So that's a pretty powerful intro, it's, uh, but have no fear, we'll, we'll get into it. So this is Candida auris, it's a type of fungus, and this little map is showing how it's spread across the globe. And so it's gone to the United States, Central America, blah, 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 blah. You can look at that on your own time. According to this report, four weeks ago, 6 March 2019, Security Council authorized the Ministry of Health to release to the world, the scientific community, a detailed analysis of a previously unknown outbreak of Candida auris that occurred in Moscow Hospital 2016 through 2017, and whose mortality rate was a shocking 42%. So basically 42% of the people that this fungus interacted with died. And keep in mind, these are people with low immune system, weak immune system. So here's what that links to. And it's a government website and talking about how Candida emerged in this hospital in Moscow. You can look at that on your own time. I'll leave links in the description. The authorizing of this historic scientific information released from Russia to the world, this report explains, was due to the findings, this is key, discovered by the Foreign Intelligence Service that determined the most probable origin of this new Candida auris disease sweeping across the globe was from, dun dun dun, the International Space Station. So this is where it starts to really diverge from the mainstream news reporting of this. And and there's some really fascinating stuff to back this up. So let's go a little further. In support of this assessment, this report details, SVR intelligence analysts noted that in February 2009, NASA astronaut scientists aboard the International Space Station suddenly deployed a new device they developed to track down microscopic fungi and bacteria. An alarming development is the International Space Station had aboard at the same time Two ancient and mysterious fungi species collected from the McMurdo Dry Valley of Antarctica and southern Victoria land that were launched in space February 2008 returned to Earth on 12th September 2009. So uh, I can already tell you kind of where this is going right now. So they're saying that they had this rare uh, fungus from Antarctica, this ancient rare fungus from Antarctica on the space station. And after it had been there for a while doing these studies, then they deployed this new device that can detect the presence of fungus out in space. The links to this NASA astronaut swap the decks. If you saw a mushroom growing in your bathroom, you'd probably bring out the heavy artillery. Blah, 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 blah. Even in space, someone has to clean the bathroom. The crew of the space station works hard to keep things clean. 
Uh, so what they're saying is that stuff still grows out in space. Strange but true, LOCAD works using enzymes from an immune system of a horseship, uh, horseshoe crab. Astronauts swab the surface with a high-tech Q-tip, insert a sample. So basically it's a device that can detect fungus in the space station in a very short, relatively short amount of time. So they deployed this new fungus detecting machine after they already had this mysterious fungus from Antarctica on the space station. So what they're saying is, did they need it? Was it urgent? Did they need it at the time to make sure that this Antarctic fungus wasn't spreading through the space station? Let's keep going. Most concerning to SVR intelligence analysts about the time frame the mysterious Antarctica fungi were aboard the International Space Station. This report continues. We're still unexplained travels and activities of NASA astronaut mission specialist Kochi Wakata. He was mentioned in the beginning. This actually will turn out to be key. So Kochi Wakata, who is due to travel to the International Space Station on Expedition 18, scheduled to launch 15th March 2009, but at the last moment was pulled from this launch for what NASA said was training on new equipment. He is then be scheduled to Expedition 19 due to launch 26 March 2009, but was inexplicably scrubbed from NASA when they realized they'd have to use a Russian Soyuz spacecraft, which mandates a medical examination for all astronauts prior to liftoff. That in turn caused Wakata, along with his full Expedition 19 crew, to be launched during Expedition 20 on 31 July 2009. It was an expedition that saw Wakata traveling to the National Space Station aboard a NASA space shuttle unlike other astronauts on the mission who use the Soyuz. So what they're saying is they put this uh, Wakata, they put him on a different spaceship so he wouldn't have to go through the Russian health inspection. Really interesting. Which indicates, if this is true, it indicates they knew that Wakata was potentially infected with this fungus already. Though the exact mission and travels of NASA astronaut Kochi Wakata are more highly classified than this general report allows the reporting of, it notes his being in Japan shortly before the first case of Candida auris was documented occurring there. That was followed by the Americans conducting a multi-year scientific effort to discover if fungi could survive in our Earth's most upper atmosphere. So they're saying that they, they're basically alluding to the fact that NASA already knew that uh, the space station was infected with Candida auris, and therefore they went on the study to see if it could survive in Earth's upper atmosphere. And if you look at the study, it says that basically they can, they totally can survive in uh, upper atmosphere. High diversity of fungi and air particle matter. And this is from uh, National Academy of Sciences, United States of America. I won't go into that, I'll leave the link. You can check it out yourself. Basically, they went on the study to see if they could survive and they could. So that's not so good for us, assuming these sports could rain down, which may be happening now. Let's keep going. The first results of which were released August 2009, showing that fungal spores and other biological particles can account for large portions of aerosol particles, mass, and pristine rainforest air as well in the rural urban environments, meaning everywhere. In the first study of its kind released January 2013, discovered that there's a surprising amount of bacteria and fungi as high as 30,000 feet. And remarkably, these microbes could be affecting the climate as well as contributing to the spread of disease down on Earth. So there's tons of stuff flying around in our upper atmosphere. And a long time ago, they didn't believe that was possible. Now it's been confirmed as scientifically fact. And let's. Get, and at the end of this, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that. But let's keep going with this. So saying components of the atmosphere. With Russian scientists having already d detailed a NASA how after 1986 launch of the pristine Mir space station, fungi and bacteria growth became unstoppable. And there's a link to uh, the article about the Mir space station, basically saying the Russian Mir space station became totally uh, covered in live microbes. And they say it's from water and heat, which is totally possible, but you know, it could also be from space itself. And that's something that's really interesting. Panspermia, we'll go into that here at the end. But basically they found a globular uh, free floating mass of water and nearly the size of the basketball and it was full of life. This report states, it was no surprise that the mysterious ancient fungi discovered in Antarctica and sent to the International Space Station not only survived the brutal conditions of space, but also managed to re 
produce. So I have the link to this article right here and I went through it. It's from Scientific America and it's about how they took this Antarctic fungus into the space station. And this is the part that I highlighted because it says, even though a few of the fungi exposed to Mars-like conditions survived well enough to reproduce, in all cases, at least a fraction did. So they were doing a study to see if this Antarctic fungus could survive in really, really intense conditions. And most of it did not, but some of it did. And not only did it, it actually reproduced. And that's key for this whole theory that the supposed Russian intelligence is talking about. And whose greatest fear now suspect to be true is that the ancient fungi has spread to the exterior of the International Space Station where its spores from are now raining down on the Earth. Supporting these fears that Candida RS fungi spores erupting from the exterior of the International Space Station are now entering our Earth's atmosphere and altering our planet's existing fungi species. The report continues was genome sequence testing that showed that there were four distinct versions of the fungus with differences so profound they suggest that these strains had diverged thousands of years ago and emerged as resistant pathogens from harmless environmental strains in four different places at the same time. This is really, really, really key to understand because if this is true, um, and if you look at this uh, article from the New York Times, it actually says one of the weirdest things about all this is that there's these uh, divergent strains that are thousands of years in evolution apart and that wouldn't be possible if it was just something that uh, came from our modern times it would have to be something that evolved separately over a long period of time which definitely supports this hypothesis that it came from ancient antarctic fungus so all the information is here if you want to look into it uh a finding so shocking it caused CDC infectious disease, disease expert Dr. Snigod, sorry, I'm going to butcher your name, to fearfully uh, enteric proclaim somehow it made a jump almost seemingly simultaneously all around the world and seemed to spread. It is drug resistant, which is really mind boggling. And that's because either he doesn't know that it might have came from the space station or he's helping to cover it up. Um, because if it came from the space station, it makes perfect sense that it would be raining down from everywhere, hitting the globe pretty much all at once. And the first case was in Japan, and that's just because one of the first people who was interacting with it was a Japanese, was a Japanese uh, astronaut who went back home. Most cast catastrophic and terrifying about the space home candida RS fungi disease as it continues its deadly sweep across the globe, this report concludes, is that it's unstoppable. Um, and it's why a climate of secrecy, which remember is the very beginning of the New York Times article. Bam. Mysterious infection in Spain and the globe in a climate of secrecy. About and why a climate of secrecy about its rapid spread now exists in the West, most particularly because it preys upon the sickest human beings found in the hospitals and care, all of which found infected have been nearly completely destroyed. Um, so I read another article that was really interesting that kind of supports this that says they found it in this uh, UK Imperial College of London. They, well, n not there, but they found it in a high up uh, UK hospital and they did a test to see if they could destroy it. They did an aerosol spray of hydrogen peroxide, which would normally kill everything. And after two weeks, uh, the CRS Candida RS still was able to germinate and replicate. So um, this is not at all fear uh, based. The reason I'm bringing this up at all is because it's important to understand if this is true. Um, and it seems there is some secrecy and propaganda around it. And I think it's key to understand a couple things. A, um, particles are always raining down from space. We'll get into that in my next video like this. I'm going to talk about panspermia. And if you haven't heard about that, I'll say it in a second. But B, um, how can you defend yourself against this? Now, keep in mind, the people who are most affected are the ones who are sick or elderly. And if basically, if your immune system is compromised, so the question then becomes, and the question that is on a lot of people's minds is how do I strengthen my immune system? 
And this is really, really key. And the truth is there's only a couple ways to really strengthen your immune system. The obvious one is diet, um, giving your body what it needs. And the main thing your body needs, believe it or not, is deep breaths. And that's a key part of it all. Um, but so diet, getting enough sleep, these are key parts of your immune system. And one of the things that so many people forget or don't know at all is that your immune system is passive to your blood flow. Your immune system can only work as fast as your blood is moving. So the best way to increase your immune system effectiveness is to get your heart going, get your heart pumping, move around, move around, move around. That's why the people who are the healthiest are the people who move around the most people exercise, dance, run, etc. And so the best, best of best advice we have is a diet, B exercise, move around, get your blood pumping, your blood, literally your heart has to be pumping. Like going for a walk is great and that will help and it's good to be outside, but it's really important to actually get your heart rate up, like sprint or do something really hard, even just for a second. You don't have to be a long distance runner, but you do need to get your heart rate up and that allows your blood to literally filter more through your immune system. And the last part, and maybe even the most important is actually your emotional state. Um, it has been proved that people who are in a negative emotional state, they're depressed, they're sad, whatever, they're way more susceptible to disease and infection. And it's because you have more energy flowing through your body when you're feeling good. And I'll be making videos about that. Um, if you're watching this in the future, look up my videos about law of attraction or the source of your consciousness, that kind of stuff. And basically you have this energy flowing to your body all the time. Some people call it chi, some people call it life force, soul, whatever. Your emotions are telling you how much energy you're allowing into your body. If you're feeling really, 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 really good, it's because there's tons of energy flowing and you are projected, you are safe, and that's where you want. So good diet, plenty of sleep, move around, try to feel happy as much as possible. It's not about being ah oh, airy fairy all the time, but the better you feel, the better you are, the more healthy you are. So yeah, it's all good. Check out my other videos. Thanks for watching this video from the Cosmic Embassy. Remember to subscribe, like this video, comment down below. What do you think about CRS? Are you terrified? Are you not worried at all? Do you think it came from the space station? Um, really interesting stuff. All the links below. Subscribe, comment, love you. Mwah.